wonder if you could also describe for us in greater details what the numbers all mean. The good news about the numbering system in bearings is that when it was established, and the, good, the greater news is now, after some people went rogue, most companies around the world use the so-called SKF, FAG numbering system, which for most bearings is where the first digit or two, on a four-digit number, the first digit tells us the engineering style, whether it be a self-aligning bearing, a radial bearing, a angular contact bearing, and so on. The second digit tells us the relative size of the outside diameter. And fortunately, the last two digits, which are the most important, tell us the size of the shaft that the bearing is going on. An example would be a 6205 bearing. The 6 tells us it's a radial ball bearing. The 2, that it's a medium-sized outer diameter. But most importantly, the 05, you multiply the last two digits by 5, so we know that's a 25 millimeter shaft. The best part is if someone's designing something and they think, oh, this is so special, they can put in a standard bearing right out of the catalog to meet their engineering need because it all fits the same envelope dimensions. You can have bearings running along the same shaft with the same boundary dimensions that have different engineering styles and can accomplish various things, whether it be self-alignment, heavy loads, two rows of balls, and so on. Or you can have alternatives with the same shaft with different outside dimensions. And we can show how this works with this little demonstration. Bearings typically come in two major categories, ball or roller. And the good news is for different applications, you can have the same boundary dimensions for different bearings to accomplish a different thing. So we'd first like to show, and also once again, the numbering system indicates what you know the style is. We have some fairly large examples of bearings. This is a cylindrical roller bearing. Inner and outer ring can be mated. A spherical roller bearing with rollers. The advantage here is you have self-alignment. A self-aligning ball bearing. Typically this was in the textile industry, but it's in packaging, plastics, and so on. Then this is a good example of an axial bearing or a thrust bearing with mated parts. And this sits along the shaft and takes load going this way. But one of the key things I want to demonstrate is the options that people have with different style bearings. Okay? These are all the same ID and OD, same inside dimension and outside dimension. But they're all very different bearings internally. So, if we put these all together, you'd see they could fit in the same hole, ID and OD. But they're all very, very different. And once again, you'll see the pattern of the numbering system, how it's identical. This is a 1205 bearing, which is a self-aligning, once again, 25 millimeter shaft, bearing that accepts loads radially, but also axially, and it self-aligns to accommodate that. Here we have a 3205 bearing, the three indicating it's a double row ball bearing. It has two rows of balls, once again, 25 millimeter shaft. This is typically used in material handling industry and every and other heavy duty industries. The 6205, this, once again, 25 by 52 millimeters. These are all 25 by 52 millimeters. 6205 is in the radial bore category, which is the most popular category in the world of bearings. Most motors and so on, compressors, although the bearings are much bigger. Okay, the 87505, this represents the felt seal series. They're no longer using felt seal so much, but these are a great design tool when you need a standoff on the ID. If you put these together, there's actually a small gap. And that's created by an extended inner ring. Okay? The 7205, the 7 indicates that it can take more angular load. Literally, one face has a higher shoulder, so the ball can ride up on it 
and this can accept more load. Typically you might want to mount these in pairs so that you have load that can run both directions. Okay. Once again, angular contact simply means more combined load axially and radially. Now I have these. Now you might ask why are there two together? These are machine tool bearings. Machine tool bearings have tighter tolerances, they have to be run in pairs, and they're typically been faced off. And the preload, the preload indicates how rigid or tight you want the bearing assembly to be, have to be controlled. Once again, you see the pattern of all the same sizes with different options. The insert bearing here, an insert bearing is what could go into a pillow block or an independent housing. The advantage is larger grease cavity, easier to mount because it can be with set screws or an eccentric lock collar, and you can have a lubrication ring. The most popular of this style for us are free running bearings, which go into the printing industry, low torque, low drag applications. Now, if you have a lot of axial load, and you have it in both directions, think of a car wheel would be the most common one people would relate to. You have a cup and cone bearing or taper roller bearing. This separates, it mounts together. This goes in the housing, this along your shaft, put together with a mating, pair, mating unit. And this way it can take load from both directions. High radial load, high axial load. Okay. And they fall apart when you don't hold them together. Okay. Then we have a cylindrical roller bearing here. Once again, with the same envelope dimensions, we can have rollers or, and you see, so the rollers are attached to the outer ring. This is an NU style. And you mount the inner ring to the shaft. Many failures, you can see this is why you have potential for failures in this style more than others. When you mate them together, for demonstration purposes, this is pretty simple, but under load it's more difficult. When this is put together, the ring and all the mating surfaces should be concentric and perpendicular. Otherwise, you'll have failure because it's easy to score this raceway here. That raceway. Okay. And the last of the styles of bearings that, once again, are the same would be a spherical roller bearing. High load, not as high as speed, but provide some self-alignment as well. Now for pure thrust, think of a potter's wheel. This is an axial bearing or thrust bearing. Once again, same boundary dimensions, but all the load has to go this way or this way. And it accepts no radial load, radial load being referred to as perpendicular to the shaft line. Okay. Now we've seen that you can have all the same ID and OD bearings you know, for an application. But also I want to demonstrate that for the same shaft, you can have heavier load carrying capacity by going up that second digit. The second digit, whether it be, let's say going from a six, in this case a five, it's a 25 millimeter shaft. You can have a 6005, 6205, or 6305. There's even a 6405. So let's say you spec in that you want the same shaft dimension throughout, but you will have more load at one part of the application, then you certainly you just move up on your OD dimension. And they go pretty thin too. There's a 6905 and a 6805. I'd also like to mention that the universality of design in terms of metric dimensions and how they go in ascending order also applies to other products. Some of these other products naturally would be oil seals. This happens to be another style of isolator seal. These are 25 millimeters once again. Traditional lip seal in all styles. But also, let's say you have sliding or linear motion that you want to incorporate into your design. Once again, these are, this is a so-called super style or your traditional style. These are linear motion bearings. Once again, it can be designed in along the same shaft line. Uh, in automation and robotics, these are essential components. 
spherical bushings, where you don't have rolling elements. Think of a knuckle bushing on a uh, style of excavator would be that. And then these, this shows pretty easily, once again, thrust bearings. So once again, conforming to the same dimensional categories and boundary dimensions that we had discussed earlier on the radial ball and cylindrical roller bearings.